Hey everyone, it's Ivan with Badger.com here to bring you another gear view and today we're talking optics. This guy right here, which is the Night Force NX8. I've had the opportunity to run this optic for a couple months now and get a pretty good feel for it. Got to kind of stretch its legs in a carbine course put on by Sheepdog Response. In that course, I ran this on top of my Honey Badger, a little 300 blackout, and actually did a really good job for me. Most of the time, kept it on one power, but Thanks to basically the brightness settings on here, which you can crank this thing up to a fireball, like most certainly daylight bright. And because of that, actually works really well, more or less as a red dot, especially at those pretty much close distances, anywhere from 50 meters in. And because of, honestly, how bright that is, actually works really well from kind of unconventional shooting positions as well whether you're shooting around barricades, stuff along those lines, especially on the support side. We were also in that course able to stretch out to one, two, three hundred yards where this actually really shines. Again, this being NX8, it's a variable power one to eight. So you can keep this guy down here on one, then very easily crank this up to eight, at which point Eight times magnification, that brings everything in close. One thing that is kind of unique with respect to this, a lot of low power variables out there, but this is actually using a first focal plane reticle. What does that mean? With a first focal plane, it means our reticle is increasing or decreasing in size depending on the magnification. So with this on one power, as I'm looking through, reticle is really small. As I crank it up, the reticle is getting larger and larger. What does this do for us? Ultimately, a couple different things. The reticle is offered in both mil as well as MOA. This one happens to be MOA. So again, what is the benefit there? Well, this being first focal plane, those reference marks, mil or MOA, are always correct, regardless of what power you're on. So unlike some scopes where maybe you have to dial to 10 power to be able to actually use the reticle, throughout the entire one to eight, if it says it's 0.3 mils, it's 0.3 mils. If it says it's 3 MOA, it's 3 MOA. It doesn't matter where you are on that spectrum with respect to power, it will always work. So again, couple that with your math and you can figure out how far something is. In addition to that, no matter where you are on that spectrum, one to eight power, whatever your holds are, they're gonna be correct. So if you don't have time to crank all the way to eight, and something's at distance, and you know it's gonna be 15 MOA hold, put it on there, no matter where you are. Again, 15 MOA hold is 15 MOA hold, regardless if you're at like four and a half power or 1.75, it doesn't matter. It's always gonna be the same for you. Some people decidedly do not like first focal plane on a low power variable optic. For me, it really comes down to the reticle. By way of example, for a while I was running a Leopold, I believe it was a Mark VI, and at one power, way too busy. There was too much stuff going on for me in the reticle. Conversely, I actually think this reticle is pretty well executed. At one power, you essentially have a vertical line coming up from the bottom, two horizontal lines coming over, and as soon as you turn any type of illumination on, pretty much just have a red dot in the middle of it. Then when you crank this guy all the way up to eight, you're left with pretty much all the stuff that looked like a red dot when you had it on one power, which actually gives you kind of all the milling you need as far as being able to one, create holds, or again, kind of mill, figure out distances. For reference, we'll go ahead and look through this guy at 50 yards at my K-Bats, k, -Bats, k -Badger anatomy targets. And right here, looking at it on one power, and conversely, right here, cranking this guy up to eight. Now we'll take a look at some steel out at 100 yards. The target we're gonna be looking at is 12 inches wide by 20 inches, basically a reduced silhouette. Again, right here, looking at it at one power and cranking that guy up to eight power. Lastly, again for reference, that same steel silhouette Kind of small out there at 300 yards. Again, 12 by 20, but there it is at one power. And here's looking at it at eight power. 
For me, the real magic is how they crammed all this into a little package. Dimensionally, it's under nine inches. I believe it's about eight and three quarters. Tube, 30 millimeter tube, 24 millimeter objective lens, and without a mount, this thing weighs right at 17 ounces. And again, we're going all the way up to eight power with this, or back down to one. And this, I will say, moves very smoothly. And unlike some manufacturers where they'll sell you like aftermarket, like cattail throw lever, this comes with this guy, does a great job. You can either put it there or there's a second position. You can place it right there, depending on what you want. Over here on the left, we have our adjustments for illumination. There's a stop in between each level. And then up top, we have zero stop. You can go ahead and crank this guy if you need to. Personally, especially with how well the reticle works in here, I would rather have this a cap turret, but it is what it is. Over on this side, this one is capped. You can, of course, take this guy off. And once you do that, you can adjust your windage. Again, once you get it set, remove that. Go ahead, set it to zero, should you need to crank anything. Personally, I think there's a lot of value in low-powered variable optics. While most people run them, honestly, probably 25 yards and in, most weapons are capable of going pretty far. So to that end, being able to have something to one, refine that sight picture at distance, as well as target ID, it's pretty handy. And I think this one honestly does a pretty good job. Where does it kind of fall short? For me personally, I feel the iBox isn't as forgiving as some low powered scopes. A while ago, I ended up reviewing the, what was it? Razer Gen 2 E 1 to 6 by Vortex, their light model. And honestly, pretty good optic, clear clarity, all that stuff. I will say I felt like the eye box in that was a little bit more forgiving, but here's where this makes up. The reticle in this combined with how bright the settings are basically turns this into a red dot. So when it comes to unconventional shooting positions, maybe shooting support side, anything like that, I think whatever shortcomings it has with respect to an eye box is made up for with respect to both the reticle as well as the intensity of the illumination. So with that illuminated reticle, even if we get it anywhere close, we can immediately pick it up and break those good shots, even if we're not in a stable shooting position. I will say the glass on this is really nice and clean. Did some shooting at night with this using white light at distance, like 100 and 300 yards. Definitely reaching out there. And yeah, like that's pretty hard on optics. This actually did a pretty good job for me. If you're in the market for a low power variable optic, I'd give a hard look at this, especially there's a lot of good stuff going on in a small light package. Again, under nine inches, 17 ounces, one to eight. Things pretty cool. Price wise, I'm guessing their map is $17.50. If you're unfamiliar with map, minimum advertised price. They basically hold everyone to because everywhere you look, it's $17.15. To that end, yeah, you can get it anywhere, whether it's Optics Planet, Euro Optics, even have these guys on Amazon for that much. But if you pick one up or you have experience with it, let me know how it does for you. And as always, thanks for joining us at keepadger.com. Look forward to seeing you next time.